Hello and welcome back to Ordinary Differential Equations, the video series where we talk about the theory of differential equations. And in today's part 11, we start with the groundwork we need to show the existence of solutions. In particular, this will be the so-called Banach Fixed Point Theorem. However, before we start with that, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via Patreon. And as always, you should know, as a supporter, you can download all the additional material for all the videos. Okay, then let's start with the topic of today by considering our standard initial value problem as always. So it's a system of differential equations together with a starting value. And in the last video, we have discussed this initial value problem for a function v that is locally Lipschitz continuous. And there we found out that we have, in fact, a uniqueness property for the solution of this initial value problem. In other words, there is at most one solution x that satisfies both equations here. And now, of course, it would be nice to also show the existence of this solution. So the question is, how can we find solutions for this initial value problem? And one idea for that, you might already expect, is to integrate the differential equation. So let's say we integrate both sides from 0 to t. This means we need a new name for the variable in the integration and let's call it s. Hence, on the right hand side here, we have v of xs. And of course, also ds. Okay, and since we have the derivative of x here on the left hand side, we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus. This implies this here is simply x of t minus x of 0. However, x at the time 0 is by assumption given as x0. Therefore, this whole calculation implies that we have a formula for the function x of t. Namely, it's given by the point x0 plus the integral of the function v. So not complicated at all. And this is indeed our solution of the initial value problem. However, this does not help so much because the solution x we find on the right hand side here again. Hence, it's only an implicit formula for the solution of the initial value problem. However, it definitely helps us for showing the existence of a solution. And in order to do that, we have to give a name to the right hand side here. And let's do that with a capital phi. And the input for this map phi is a function x. In other words, it gets a function x and the function x comes out again. Indeed, this is the crucial thing here to note. We have to put in a function and we get a function out again. So it's a more complicated map, so let's write down a definition for it. For this, you have to recall that x is a function from r into rn. Hence, our capital phi now is a map from the function space, which we can denote by a curved f, where the input of the function is r and the output is rn. Or more generally speaking, the output space here should be the domain of definition for our function v. Okay, and now phi maps any function from this function space to another function from the function space. And maybe let's call this function now simply lowercase f. This means we map f to a new function now. And the variable name for the new function here could be t. This means now t is mapped to the value of the function and we already know that. It's x0 plus the integral from 0 to t of our function v. However, now the input for the function v is f of s. Okay, there we have it. This is the definition of our map phi. And this one we can use now to write down a solution of the initial value problem. This is definitely something you should remember because it's important for the next videos. Namely, a function x defined on the real number line is a solution of our given initial value problem if and only if phi of x is equal to x. And this is what we call a fixed point equation because the function x 
is a fixed point for the map phi. This means we have translated our problem. In order to find solutions, we can just find fixed points for the function phi. And there it turns out that we can just apply very general results about fixed points. In particular, here I want to apply the so-called Banach fixed point theorem. Therefore, for the end of this video, we will just state this important fact. It's a very general result because it holds in metric spaces. More precisely, we need a so-called complete metric space. So you see, you need to know what a metric space is, but this is not so hard. It's simply a set x together with a distance function. Hence, we can measure the distance between two points in the set x and therefore also notions like limits, convergence and so on make sense. In conclusion, complete just means that all Cauchy sequences in xd converge. A typical example of such a complete metric space is Rn together with the standard Euclidean distance function. However, in this context this example is not enough because in the end we want to apply this theorem for the function space here. Therefore, maybe we can already choose the same name for the function we want to find fixed points for. Hence, here phi is a map from x into x. And moreover, phi has to be a so-called contraction. This simply means that it makes distances smaller. And this is such an important concept that we should really write down the definition of this. Okay, so we simply want to measure the distance between two points and let's call them phi of x and phi of x tilde. So you see, this is already the distance we measure for the images. So x and x tilde come from the left hand side here and these two points are on the right hand side. And now the claim is that this distance is smaller than the original one. Hence it should be less or equal than the distance between x and x tilde. And since we actually want to get smaller on the left hand side, we have to put a factor in front and we call it q. And this factor q should be strictly less than 1. So you see, by this claim, the distance really gets smaller. Hence, the existence of this q we have to put into the definition. More precisely, we want that we have a q between 0 and 1. But most crucially, 1 is excluded, so we don't have the case that we stay at the same distance. And we also have the very important fact that this q holds for all x and x tilde in x. In this sense, this q is a universal constant. Okay, so now this is the whole assumption we need and now the theorem tells us that phi has exactly one fixed point. And this unique fixed point we can just call x star. Moreover, the Banach fixed point theorem also tells us how we can find this fixed point x star. Namely, we just have to start with any point x0 from the metric space x and then we can just do the iteration with the map phi. This means if you use the composition with phi n times, you get a sequence in x. And this sequence is a convergent one with limit x star. In other words, by using this iteration, you can approximate the fixed point. In fact, I can already tell you that this iteration is the whole idea for the proof of this statement. Hence, the proof is not so complicated and maybe something we can do in another video. However, first in the next video, we want to apply this nice theorem to our initial value problem. This means we can finally show the existence of a solution for this problem. Therefore, I really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.